A shorter tackle the big issues affecting the BVI and the rest of the Caribbean. Searches for answers to today's big questions and gives viewers a unique perspective on developing stories. Follow the big story with me, Kathy Richards, only on JTV. This show is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands, Cyril B. Romney Tertola Pier Park, NV Salon Spa Nail and Barbershop, the Wellness Center, Medical and Behavioral Health Clinics, Tissily Cross Deliciously Smooth Cider, HOV Medical and Digicel. Sign up for Digicel Plus Home Light Bundles, faster internet movies and sports. This is The Big Story. I'm Kathy Richards. I want to thank you so much for joining us for this edition. We do live in a community that we call a Christian community, and there are so many things that happen around us as it relates to our Christian standing for many reasons, to keep us grounded, to keep us grounded. Well, my guest today is from the Anglican uh, religion, I should call it, or denomination, yes, uh, Tom Welch, and he's a visitor here in uh, the Virgin Islands. Tom, a very, very big Virgin Islands welcome to these to this territory. Thank you, thank you. It's been yeah. a delightful stay. Okay, so before we get into the root of why you're here, what you've been doing, and what you're going to be doing uh, going forward, uh, give us a little background as to who you are, where you're from. Okay, all right. Uh, I've lived in, lived in the States my entire life, uh, born in Mississippi. Uh, spent about a decade or so in Dallas, Texas, uh, with my as my father's career took him out there. Came back uh, as a 12 or 13 year old and lived there uh, exclusively until about 2016. It was in the business world, uh, enjoyed it, had a blast. Uh, it's all about building relationships, whatever you do, uh, and I've still got those friendships there, which is is wonderful. But about six or seven years ago. I heard about this organization called the Brotherhood of St. Andrew and what they were about and I was intrigued by it and then learned that they were um, looking to uh, hire a new executive director for the first time in about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I listened to that small still voice that John Wesley wrote of so long ago uh, and became a little louder about I want you to take some bold steps and so I wound up moving from Jackson, Mississippi. 600 miles north to Louisville, Kentucky, to their national office, and that's been home for the last six or seven years. Okay. And uh, that's where I am. Okay, so you've always had a Christian upbringing. Yes. Yeah. By God's grace. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Also, now you would have taken that journey over to the Virgin Islands uh, to do something really special. I saw some figures there. I can't remember it out of my head. There would have been some amount of thousands. I think it over 5,000 or 6,000 yes. and change. <clears throat> uh, but for the very first time, it's happening for the Virgin Islands. Let, let's get the details. Okay. Of that. Well, the Brotherhood of St. Andrew was formed in downtown Chicago, Illinois in 1883 uh, as 12 men responded to the leanings of the spirit uh, to provide food, clothing, and shelter to homeless men and youth in the area, downtown in particular. And from that it grew uh, exponentially uh, and when a chapter at an Anglican or Episcopal church is, is formed, they have a, a chapter number. And so the first chapter was St. James, Chicago, and each subsequent chapter down the road gets a, a number, whether they're domestic or international, and we're in about 20 countries. Uh, and this was the first time uh, Father uh, Clifton Ellis and I met over the telephone uh, almost two years ago and began uh, conversations, and then uh, finally bumped into each other at a conference in Baltimore, Maryland earlier this summer, and it was like I'd been with an old friend. and. Uh, he had been wanting to get a, a, a brotherhood chapter at St. Mary the Virgin over on Virgin Gordon, uh, Gorda. Gorda, Sorry, yes. that's only, that happens when you just have two cups of coffee. I have to have three <laughs> or four and I'm going. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the ministry, the lay ministry, mm -hmm. it's a lay ministry, is about prayer, intentional prayer, intentional study leading to service and within and beyond the walls of the church. Mm. And that struck a chord with him because he'd been involved with it for 25 years in his uh, career in the ministry up in the States. 
And so they became yesterday the 5,460th chapter to be chartered mm -hmm. uh, and the first to be chartered uh, in the BVI. Okay. So how does this work? How does this work? Chartering? The, 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 the brotherhood oh, well, now okay. that is formed here, how does it work? Well, it would be a group of men who have an interest in Bible study, mm -hmm. uh, uh, prayer, and then working within the community, uh, within the church itself and beyond. And one of the things that I shared yesterday, I was uh, the guest preacher there uh, at their church yesterday morning, was uh, for those that are born, say, after 1990, mm -hmm. probably the way you're going to grab them is community service, them embracing that and becoming involved with that. And as they do that, they'll see something else that they might see in you, which might lead them to some Bible study, and before you know it, they're at the church and they're with their prayers, and realizing that you can pray anywhere. But it's taking the model and kind of flipping it upside down for a younger generation, because that's what they're passionate. I have a 25-year-old, mm -hmm. and that's what she's passionate about. Uh, and she knows if she's going to get young adults to see the way, the truth, and the light, she's going to have to do it, and is doing it, kind of flip from the way she was brought up, you know, in the church. Mm. Uh, particularly where you have a lot of her contemporaries uh, were brought up in single parent households. That's a major one. Yeah. And a lot of times a parent can't stop working long enough to take a child to a faith community. And uh, that's a challenge. And so being out there uh, where they are and loving them for who they are as they are where they are, if they might see a light and a love uh, greater than something uh, earthly, then God wins. Mm. Well, we, we have a worldwide uh, situation, because wherever you go in the world, you hear about it. The challenge of uh, mentoring and uh, raising our young men, our men, uh, into well-respected and rounded individuals. The world seems to be uh, more focused on children, young girls, and women. And we don't often ten times hear enough being done for men. And we hear that cry all the time from the men themselves, oh, everything is about women, everything is about women. How impactful now having this brotherhood established in Virgin Gorda, and I pray to God that you come as well to uh, Tertola and get one on Annie Gad and yes, Van Dyke, I know uh, Father Ellis is sitting down over there. Okay, Kathy. <laughs> how, 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 Patience, how, Kathy. <laughs> in God's time. <laughs> yes. How, 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 how impactful is this now in, in, in dealing with those situations that we face with our young men? The, uh, there's an example I can share that I hope gets repeated here. And that was uh, a church in Texas, state of Texas. had They saw the need for mentoring, particularly young men, uh, and early in their careers, in their 20s and 30s. Uh, and they used social media outlets, Kathy, to uh, advertise it outside of the church. And the, first they got a group of men together to train them on knowing how to mentor one-on-one -on -one and doing some uh, safeguarding training so to uh, protect the integrity of the process. And uh, they advertised uh, through the sources that, that demographic uses and they found uh, of the first 16 young men in their careers that wanted that mentoring and they had different careers. Some were teachers, doctors, physicians, uh, utility workers, line workers that would make sure the cable is running from point A to point B. So it's not just white collar or blue collar, yeah, blue we'll, collar and white collar. Get, they, get That's their right. hands dirty. That's yes. right. So um, about four of them uh, were cradle uh, brought up in the faith from birth. Uh, four of them, you know, occasionally went to church and half of them had no faith background at all. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the 16 weeks, those young adults, and they met with their mentor once a week, but once a month they met for supper. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily Bible-driven conversation at supper, but it kind of, it happens mm -hmm. uh, under God's divine care. And by the end of that, those 16 guys wanted to do an organized, structured Bible study. Wow. And they wanted to go back and get 16 more. Oh, and so wow. went 16 to 36 to 60. Mm. And now they've got 35 and 40 men under 40 
uh, involved in various careers from different walks of life, different types of personalities and interests, but uh, the Word of God is universal mm -hmm. and eternal, mm -hmm. and it was being brought to them under a channel that they caught on to and resonated with, and they got excited. Okay, so uh, do you agree that we are literally losing our men? Oh, yesterday morning I told them if we don't do a better job of, I was speaking to the men specifically, mm -hmm. I said, we have let ourselves walk away from the church because we want to play a game of golf or we want to just be, go fishing mm -hmm. or something like that. And if we don't turn that trend, the church is doomed. So I challenge them to rise up and do something about it. And I believe that's what those 12, how do you like that number 12? That has some history, doesn't it? Oh, 12 yes. guys mm -hmm. there at that church from different walks of life. It was a pretty good cross-section of demographics, probably down to 30, up to, uh, rumor okay. is Father Ellis has been 39 for a long time. <laughs> so He's going to get you right <laughs> after this. I am so sure about that. <laughs> I've been 39 for a couple of decades, <laughs> um, but um, that's what they're, uh, they're committed to doing, and I was listening to that during informal conversation before mm -hmm. church and afterwards. I think that's what's going to happen there is they will, uh, they've got a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. When you get a group of people committed to the work of God in their communities, because of their backgrounds, they're going to know how to filter into the community and make an effort and I, I, I just know from what their strategic plan that they've got in their path for you know a, probably a five-year plan would be a safe number to use maybe a little bit less you watch what happens uh, on Virgin Gorda over the next two years and you watch what's going to happen by observation mm -hmm. to commitment here in Tortola Awesome. Uh, we will be looking forward to that. And I can, I can hear persons who are listening to us right now saying, oh, we need to get into the schools. We need to get into the schools. Uh, young men are finding themselves in so many problems in the schools, in those formal and informal conversations that you would have heard uh, from those guys. Uh, is that one part of their plan to, to tap into schools where they could meet these young guys? I don't know how developed they are. You know, I still think they're in that dreaming phase uh, of, of uh, well, they're putting a lot of things to paper and mm -hmm. talking about it, praying about it among themselves. But I, I just, it's going to be a natural flow that they would have an impact uh, in the academic uh, arena at schools, if nothing other than helping with reading programs. Mm -hmm. You know, helping children learn how to read. Uh, you've got, you've got people here that are bilingual or maybe have three languages in which they can work. I, I have one, I'm, I'm sorry uh, to say, right no. now. But um, that's why I think, I think uh, there'll be a difference there. And I think the, the women that begin to see these guys take ownership and leadership again, uh, I think it's gonna make for a better community. Awesome, that is what we are all looking forward to. And you know, while we would say that, you know, to each his own, we know that what we do in the various sectors, like you in the religious sector, me in the media, you have different sectors where we do different things that we try to uh, make a positive impact on our people, not just the men. Uh, but one thing that comes to mind, I don't know if you have any stories about that and how it works, working, the Brotherhood working with prisons, with inmates. The largest brotherhood chapter we have in the country is in a uh, prison. Mm. And that prison uh, has the, one of the lowest recidivism rates in the country. In other words, repeat offenders coming back in because in many cases, in most cases, the environment in which they live does not help rehabilitate. Mm. And, but the Word of God can do miracles. And that particular chapter has, and they've tracked it within the, the records of the penal system in that state. And it's one of the lowest recidivism rates. And that, that catches the industry's, uh, the correctional care for industry's attention. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, now, what are they doing over there that we're not doing? And, uh, you know, they had men that were, went through the training programs to be able to access inmates and interact with them and do all that stuff that, that they need to do ahead of time, but they built a community. 
and they had a they had a contact when they came out of prison that they knew they could count on because if you think about it if t this is 2023 mm -hmm. if you had been in prison 20 just 23 years okay this would be these were barely we had beepers yeah. you know 25 years ago i remember we call them radio <laughs> yep you know and th there was one electronic device that all it was designed to do was to send a number to your beeper and then you had to go find a telephone to call it and that was a big deal mm -hmm. well the communication alone the communication channels are totally different mm -hmm. and uh, and there's also good stuff and bad stuff on this about that, yeah. okay particularly that in the social yeah. media mm -hmm. uh it's i <laughs> well, that's a whole different story. I, I, I wish more people didn't take the, a measure of their worth based on the likes on their phone. Mm. That's not what it's about. Mm. Uh, and, that's a whole different ball yeah. game. But uh, so that's the their success stories throughout the penal system. We mm. call and it's quiet work. Uh, it doesn't get much press. Uh, but the the good the gospel there is that's one of the fewest. Uh, one of the highest areas of, I'm sorry, one of the lowest areas of repeat offenders coming back into the system. Awesome. How do, how do we, because we know the Christian community is a very vast one. We have different denominations. How do you work, if at all, across denominations so that we get the best outcome of the cause? Well, I think you've got to work with other faith communities for the good of the whole. And I know, uh, I'm thinking right now of a, a chapter in Florida that has a couple of Jewish guys that come to this Christian church for this meeting because they like the study of scripture. Okay. So uh, what they're doing is finding a commonality among their faith through a Christian environment and building relationships and working there. And, and they're very invested in their communities. They're doing a lot of work with veterans who have become homeless uh, are uh, suffering through post-traumatic stress, which has led to, to addictions. And uh, again, it's quiet work. It's not necessarily under the radar, but it's uh, very intentional and in, in how they uh, address that. Mm. Okay, so where do we go from here? Uh, having had such a success uh, yesterday, this is prior to our recording. Yes. Uh, uh, where do we go from here? To the Lord. Let's start with prayer. Okay. Because when we pray, heaven listens. Mm -hmm. And they start getting busy on trying to take us where we are to where they know that we're trying to be and they already know is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, where do we start? Intentional prayer, uh, meeting consistently with other stakeholders who have a similar interest but may come from, I, I could see it even in different faith communities. Uh, find where you have common ground, build that relationship, and see where it goes from there. For you, what works best that keeps you grounded, keep you uh, committed to this cause? Uh, morning prayer, mm -hmm. uh, starting the day with uh, 20 or 30 minutes of, of prayer time. Uh, I'm also right now, <laughs> Uh, a student at Virginia Theological Seminary outside of Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. uh, on a program called, uh, called Pathways, which helps you discern and walk through what area you want to let the, your uh, life's calling go and how, what that could look like. But for me, and morning prayers being part of my days since I was first introduced to, to it as an elementary student when I was in a, an Episcopal school for fourth and fifth grade, and then got back to it in college <clears throat> with a friend of mine who was Episcopalian. And it, I'll, the rhythm of that consistency in prayer helps throughout my day. Uh, it helps keep me humble, uh, keeps me from letting my temper get out of hand, because uh, you've got to be patient with yourself and others when you don't see things the same, you know, don't see the trajectory going like you want it to. So that's what works, starting with prayer, Finding a close uh, a mentor, uh, someone you can talk to one-on-one -on -one and knock around ideas to help with accountability. And then before you know it, you built a faith, a whole other faith community. Mm, you said something that, 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 that uh, resonated a little there with me because growing up also, you know, we had prayer as a compulsory 
part of our day when we get to school. Mm -hmm. uh, this seems to be pulling away. We're seeing the debates, we're seeing uh, legislations in some countries that are now saying that, you know, nobody should be subjected to uh, prayer or any form of religion in school. How, what, what, what do you say about that? I say it's unfortunate. Um, I say you try to skin a cat another way. Mm. You know, so if you can't do it down road A, There's try it down road, road B. Because mm -hmm. either way, God wins. Mm. It's just you've got to work in the circumstance in which you're in. Uh. So, and, and for me, the morning, this has been voluntary, you know. Um, but I listened to my 25 year old. Uh, she's probably one of my best mentors to that demographic. And um, she's all about thinking outside the box to bring them to the box mm. or to the foot of the cross mm. in this case. Now you talk about you talk about your 25 year old being a she. Uh, mm. We know we, we focus here on the brotherhood. True. But, but in the, this very sector, uh, do we uh, tap into the female folk? Does the brotherhood tap in? Yeah. No. Or is there a is there a separate uh, is there a sisterhood on the other side? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, we have what's called associate members in the Brotherhood of Saint Andrew, and those would be uh, women, mostly spouses, uh, other than oh. just to say a single woman who help support the efforts of the ministry there. Uh, we birthed uh, a women's lay ministry in the church called the Daughters of the King. So they've got an entity there, but sometimes they become involved as associate members just to help support the men in the church and what they're trying to do because they see some common goals. Mm. And you see that, hap that that eventually can happen here as well with this chapter. It could. Mm. Uh, the, we'll leave that to the chapter. They're very autonomous. There's not a hard, you know, set rule on what to do there. So uh, it most commonly happens uh, a few years into it. Uh, where they just, well, because they're starting to see the success stories of what's happening by men for men, and they want, well, how can we support that? And then, boom, there you go. Awesome. Uh, Tom, this was a really great conversation. So happy that you would have taken that friendship with, with the father uh, to this level where you guys are now brothers <laughs> and you bringing this to the Virgin Islands. Uh, having chartered the Virgin Gorda chapter, we look forward to Tertola's. Uh, the camera is yours right now to speak to the hearts of the people of the Virgin Islands, especially our men. Well, thank you. Um, to the men and young adults here in the Virgin Islands, uh, there's a story to be told about how to uh, love people for who they are, as they are, where they are. And as you do that, uh, hopefully it points them to a higher love and a far greater love that would lead them to uh, a hunger for understanding uh, God's Word and how to apply it in 2023 and 2024, which will be here in just a minute. And uh, there's a, a brothersandrew.net has got a, a several links that might be of interest uh, in helping to foster lay ministry within the church, particularly to men and youth, uh, younger men, older men as well. And that would be my hope for the islands is to have that type of network uh, created. Uh, one of the things the pandemic did was push a lot of us into more use of this and uh, the internet and Zoom meetings and things of that nature. We have brothers that meet uh, by Zoom from all around the country. Uh, we've got, I think, a one weekly meeting that happens that happens in person as well as on camera so that their brothers who are sick maybe cannot get in or traveling with their work uh, one of them is retired and doesn't even live in the country anymore, but he can stays connected with his community of faith through that uh, digital media platform. We've been making a difference in the kingdom of God since 1883, and we want to help uh, that same spirit and method of intentional study, intentional prayer, lead to intentional community service in and outside of the walls of the church. Tom, this has been so great. I want to thank you for all that you're doing, uh, for reaching to the shores of uh, the Virgin Islands to help us to answer that cry that we hear so loudly, help save our men.
Thank you so much. Blessings. And thank you for joining us for this edition of The Big Story. I'm Kathy Richards. We know that where you choose to bank matters, and it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official Bank of Paradise, we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions, which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us, a bank that gives where it matters the most, for you, for our community, and a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 are diagnosed with cancer each year. Obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early. But with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life. We will live well. Hi, I'm Cowboy, and I'm running for stake pre no, no, presidents of stake. Thank you. And I will meet your needs. Some bathrooms are so expensive to build, they come with security. But at Staycation Butchers, our meats are affordable. People always ask me, Cowboy, where does your salmon come from? Well, our salmon comes from the water. I vote for Cowboy. It's a vote for quality, integrity, and consistency. So come into Staycation Butchers and cast your vote for me, your next president of steak. Alexandra Durant approves this message. No, I don't. Plug into Digicel Plus and get even more entertainment with Disney Plus included. The best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic all in one place. Whenever you want, plug into Plus to enjoy Disney Plus and much more with a home fiber bundle. Sign up today to sell Plus.